The next question uh, comes from a, uh, a recently retired uh, officer from in the Army Corps of Engineers who has been recruited uh, by former President Clinton uh, to work with him on the relief effort uh, in Haiti. And he says, um, he says, Mr. LaRouche, uh, one, I want to thank you uh, for your efforts both here in the United States and internationally, uh, because they are indeed indeed very desperately needed. Uh, I must preface my remarks by telling you that, uh, having been on the ground in Haiti, that I have never seen a greater human catastrophe, uh, despite all my years in the U.S. military. Uh, the fact of the matter is that despite uh, what I believe is probably an unprecedented relief effort, we're faced with a task of trying to figure out how to, how to establish food banks uh, in Port-au-Prince that could feed 1.5 million people daily. And obviously, it is almost impossible to do. And undoubtedly, while this catastrophe was caused by this earthquake, the fact of the matter is that this area was desperately poor before the earthquake hit. And while we will clearly continue to struggle to deal with the immediate needs of this population, the assessment that I've given to my superiors is that the only way to address this current nightmare is that Haiti must be rebuilt from the ground up. Now, unlike Africa, you're dealing with a relatively compact uh, geographic area, which is very close to the United States. And what I and some others have done is we've taken your proposal for a job training uh, paradigm modeled on FDR's programs, and we've adapted it for an effort to rebuild Haiti. Now, obviously, such an effort has enormous potential to both train and re-employ hundreds of thousands of Americans to engage American business and industry and, at the same time, to address a humanitarian catastrophe. We already have indications from the Congressional Black Caucus and other members, particularly members of the Senate, that they would support such, such an initiative. Now, this is obviously not the Four Power Agreement, but it is an approach that would, if, if I may say so, turn lemons into lemonade. But it is also my assessment that while this would require, without, without any doubt, a private-public partnership, that it must be government-initiated in order to succeed. I'd really appreciate your views on this mm -hmm. and whether or not you think that it is a worthwhile effort to pursue or if it is simply a diversion from a more compelling, greater need. Yeah, well, it, what should be done is the following, in my view. First of all, the government of the United States should make a contract with the government of Haiti. And the contract is for the, uh, for the reconstruction of the economy and system of the nation of Haiti. Uh, because we're dealing, we're dealing with, I know something about Haiti, and know the extreme difficulties which are a cumulative problem there, and what it's going to take to really beat that. You cannot apply a Band-Aid to Haiti. And you cannot bring in many other countries because the objective is if the country is going to be viable coming out of this mess, you have to have a sovereign Haiti. Huh? So the contract has to be essentially the United States Treaty Agreement is a treaty agreement to reestablish the efficiency, efficient sovereignty of the nation of Haiti after the destructive effect of this 
and preceding difficulties. What, what's, the, what's, the, what's the big deal, after all? It's a, na a small nation of people who have been subjected to all kinds of hi terrible history, huh? which have been promised this and betrayed and promised and betrayed and promised and betrayed, never delivered. It's in a group of nations or a group of nation t national territories which has also tended to be somewhat of a mess in one way or the other. So therefore, it's a model approach. We say, okay, we make a contract with the government as a treaty agreement between the United States and Haiti to assure the rebuilding of their country in a form in which it will be actually a functioning country which can survive. It's going to take a quarter century to get that job done. Huh? You've got to change a lot of things. But the, one, the most important thing to change is the attitude which presently prevails around the world in dealing with things like this. It, it's called fix it, pat, patch the system. My view is you have, to, you have to leave a viable system behind. Don't patch it and walk away. Make a contract and say, well, you're a small country. We can absorb the burden. Hmm? We're, gonna, we're going to work with you under the protection of the United States to make sure you come out of this successfully. Not merely successful in the sense of solving the immediate crisis, which was done before and didn't work too well. We have to follow through. We have to think about a nation's ability to maintain itself, not to be maintained from time to time because of internal crises or because of an act of nature. And that's the kind of relationship we should have with nations. So let's go back and have it. We used to do this you know, in the immediate post-war civil war period in the United States. We used to have ex-military from both the Confederate armies and the <laughs> Union Army traveled overseas, as in Egypt, to build up the system of that country. Until the British got us kicked out of there, we did a fine job. And then the British turned it into something else. But the, it, in our constitutional structure, in our tradition, a country next to ours, Haiti, just a few drops across the street, is in a terrible condition. As, as part of a, a divided island territory, which where problems tend to run across the border. Help them. Not just because you want to help them, but because you want to reaffirm a standard of morality in international affairs. And our, our commitment must be to make sure we're not just going to promise something, we're going to get it done. And if we get it done, and it's successful, it will be good for all of us.